welcome into our first installment of the McHugh Report from sun-drenched Charlottesville, Virginia. As we come to you, Dave Kane, voice of the Cavaliers, alongside my partner in crime, Jay James, breaking down this first week of fall practice for the Virginia football team and what can only be termed will development. That's the terminology we've heard from Bronco Mendenhall throughout this offseason leading into this first season as the head coach here at UVA. He's talked about changing the culture. Well, he gets an assist in the will development category for Mother Nature. It has been hot here through this first week. No question about it, Dave, and it started in the wintertime when it was 35 degrees and even lower than that. Jackson Mateo, of course, who's one of the veteran offensive linemen, told us about the fact we found out who wants us to be here. Well, you're going to find out in two a days in 95 to 100 degree heat with a 104 index and you're doing the wheel drill where you're hitting the ground, running 100 yards, getting back up on the whistle, doing up downs. I don't see guys dragging and suffering from fatigue. I see guys who are leaner. I see more sustained energy. I see more of an approach that is conducive to what Coach Mendenhall has implemented. And I know one group that it certainly has to affect are the big uglies. The offensive linemen, you know, they're carrying some weight, but they're in better shape too. They've dropped a collective 550 pounds of fat on this team across the board out of 85 scholarship players. That is an astounding number. Frank Wintrich said this is the most buy-in he has ever seen in 13 years as a strength and conditioning coach amongst a team when it comes to the off-season workouts. Now we're getting toward the season, so let's talk about this. You mentioned the offensive line. Well, that's where it all starts in so many different pieces you can talk about. For all the talk of a thin offensive line, the reality is there are about eight different guys on that front five that can step in with experience, guys that can play. You're anchored by Eric Smith's, uh, your Jackson Mateo in the center. Mm -hmm. The rest of these guys still battling it out. And on Saturday, we saw some young guys like R.J. Proctor mm -hmm. getting some reps at center, doing some things that maybe aren't in his comfort zone. But some of those younger guys on Saturday were really put into that spotlight and an opportunity to show these coaches what they can do. And that's what this camp has really been about for the first week. It's all about that, Dave, and it's also about depth. You know, you were just mentioning they're anchored by Eric Smith and Jackson Mateo, but other guys are going to have to step up. But that's where conditioning comes in. In order to find the depth, in order to sustain these guys, they have to be well conditioned. So we see it all working together. And those offensive linemen, Dave, are also blocking for the next position group we want to talk about. And that's running back where there's a ton of depth. And I know you've seen some impressive things in the scrimmages. Yeah, and that's probably the most depth of the team when you look at any position group. And it's a lot of optimism surrounding that group. And right so with Taquan Mizell coming back off of his banner season with the most receptions by a running back in ACC history and then you, you go down much further than that and the development you can see from Mizell is amazing so far through these opening days of camp he looks like a different player much more refined he's 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 got the thicker legs the whole bit just looks the part but then there's an Albert Reed who has plenty of playing experience Daniel Hamm looks much better uh, Jordan Ellis a young guy who ran for power had a good day on Saturday at the scrimmage so these are all the guys will be watching as they battle for playing time and uh, I think it's going to be a case where you see this high octane offense tempo has been the buzzword you're going to need a lot of different bodies that can step in and play because you need to continue to substitute to run as many plays as this offense hopes to be running on uh, this this fall as soon as they set the ball Kurt Benkert even told us about this we're looking to go but and when the ball is, is placed by the official it's time to go so you have that versatility and the depth Smoke Mizell and Alameda Zacchaeus are similar type players with explosive abilities who can be in the slot or in the backfield to go with these other guys. So there's a ton of depth, but I just did it. I mentioned Kurt Benkert. I mentioned Matt Johns, Connor Brewer. These people don't think we're not going to talk about the quarterbacks, Dave. As we break down all the positions, the quarterbacks, the one that is at the foremost of everybody's mind. And once again, this year, no exception. Kurt Pankert, he's the new one. He's the guy that the coaching staff is trying to learn more about. With that said, he's seen more reps throughout practice this week than anybody else, partially because of his play, but partially because of the fact that there's a limited body of work that they've had to watch him. So here he comes back, trying to get into the fold, trying to get into that rhythm, learn a little bit of a new system, but it's not an entirely new system for Pankert, is it? No, it's not. And of course, whether you call him the Thor back or the air raid offense or whatever that he was going to run at East Carolina. He's used to that up-tempo, and he told us, Dave, in media sessions, he said, look, the terminology is different. My biggest challenge is what used to mean one thing on the field from similar type of terminology means something else here at Virginia. But the concepts are the same, and the more we get into it, the less I have to think as a quarterback. 
For Matt Johns, it's going to take some getting used to transitioning completely from a pro-style offense. For Connor Brewer, who's been in multiple offenses, having transferred a couple of different times, he said, look, this is very similar to a couple of the places that I have been. And he is impressed in this spring session and as well with his accuracy and his ability to control this offense. So this is a three-horse race, man. And what I love about what Coach Mendenhall said, Dave, is look, I have a responsibility to make sure that I allocate the reps adequately so we can make a quality decision. And it's based a lot on analytics, too, about what they're evaluating. Well, a lot of weapons to choose from on that offense. One other guy we will mention, David Eldridge. He's had a standout camp through the first week, a young receiver. Some of those receivers will have to step in and try to fill the void by Kane and Severed and what he brought a season ago for this Virginia football team. But for now, we'll take a break. We'll come back in a week. We'll talk a little bit about that defense in the next installment of the McHugh Report here from Charlottesville.